r slash ask reddit lawyers of reddit what's the most cringy case you've had i made an account just to share this story we interviewed a middle-aged man who was poor and received food stamp assistance for himself he had an emotional support dog some kind of toy breed who was untrained and most likely just his pet according to him the dog could only eat expensive organic whole foods and could not eat ordinary dog food he applied for what basically amounts to food stamp assistance for his dog. The state granted the food stamp assistance for the dog. He came to this outrage because the amount of food stamp money he got for the dog did not allow him to buy the organic whole foods that the dog required. He wanted to appeal the food stamp decision and get even more money. We turned the case down. This resulted in claims of disability discrimination against everyone in the office who interacted with him. Guy wanted to declare bankruptcy for gambling debts. They weren't even big debts. He just felt like they were too annoying in trying to collect on the debt that he wanted to stiff them by going through bankruptcy. The dead penis consult. Years ago I did pie work. Older man came in and wanted to sue because he took off brand Viagra. You know the big warning about if the effect lasts for more than 4 hours go see a doc. Yep, yeah, he did too. But he ignored it due to embarrassment. For 3 days. By the time he went in, blood had pooled, thickened, and completely destroyed his penis. They open it up, remove what needs to be removed, tell him that was his last erection of his life. He is understandably bitter, but not much I could do since he admitted to ignoring the warning. That's when he stood up, in my office, dropped trow with no warning and yelled that he should be paid for having to deal with his new dead situation. I asked him to pack up his situation and leave. Then I had a whiskey and resolved never to ignore any medication warning ever again. I rep. Mom of daughter. Mom's boyfriend did a bunch of grooming behavior including buying the daughter a lipstick vibrator and lube. I recall the daughter was 12 or 13 at the time. The mother completely and utterly stood by her man and didn't care if it cost her custody of her daughter. Social services intervened child was removed and placed into custody of bio father. She retained me when bio father filed to terminate child support and have his own child support established. The woman was in her late 40s and wore ponytails on each side of her head and or braids on each side of her head and had them decorated like little girls have. She also wore, almost constantly, what appeared to be a catholic school girl outfit tartan skirt, white shirt, low cut, and vest. It was if she was trying to look like a little girl. I found her and her pedo boyfriend completely cringy. Oh. There are so many cringy cases out there. Mom and dad are immigrants who are self-made rich. $100 plus million rich. They have 4 adult children. Child 1 is a well respected physician. Child 2 is a college professor and successful author. Child 4 is a stay at home mom and socialite. Her husband is a CEO in Silicon Valley. Child 3 is a scam artist. But even though child 3 is mom's favorite, she recognizes him for who he is. The whole family live in California. Mom and dad have long standing valid wills and trusts. About 15 years before, they paid a lot of money for bulletproof estate planning. Part of this was to ensure that child 3 never had access to their money. He received a modest stipend. I think it was $5,000 a month for life. Indexed to inflation. And that child 3's kids, their grandkids, would be taken care of. Dad dies. And mom has early stage dementia. Less than 48 hours after dad dies. Child 3, representing himself, sues children 1. 2 and 4 in another state where none of them lived because he didn't like the fact that 15 years earlier mom and dad wrote him out of the will, and that dad hung on long enough for his kids to graduate from college, never mind that mom and dad paid for all 14 grandkids college educations, so he doesn't have access to his kids trust funds. My firm's senior partner and child 1 were fraternity brothers in college, and we happened to practice in the state where child 3 brought his suit. I'm successful in getting the case dismissed for a lack of jurisdiction. About 18 months later, child 3 then finds out that children 1, 2 and 4 are limited partners in a real estate development in my state. He sues them for their part of the real estate development, because they obviously invested mom and dad's money that he was entitled to. We're hired again, and successfully dismiss that case. Three years go by, it's now about six years from when dad died, and we find out that mom has died. Child 3 sues us, as well as children 1, 2 and 4, 
for medical malpractice, only child 1 is a physician, in yet another state, his reasoning, because we had his cases dismissed, and mom died, then the fact that he lost his cases caused her to die, the fact that she was in her mid 80s and suffering from dementia couldn't possibly have anything to do with that, my wife's best friend is an attorney in the same city where the case against us was filed, I pro hack vice in, temporary admission for a single case, and get this case dismissed, the best part, all told, we racked up well over $200,000 in fees and expenses from all of this frivolous litigation, he's been ordered to pay us all of our fees, plus interest from the date of the beginning of case 1, with interest, it's over $600,000, we've garnished his stipend, so we're getting the $5,000 month, which I now think is about $7,000, it barely covers his interest, he's going to be paying us for the rest of his life, and we have a nice, guaranteed revenue stream. A woman wanted to charge her ex for stealing her indoor slash outdoor cat. The cat had been gone for two days, when it returned, it smelled like cigarette smoke, her ex was a smoker, so she thought this was plenty of evidence against him. I defend corporations that fail to pay taxes. A company failed to pay millions in excise taxes. They blamed it on another newer company that came in as competition to their monopoly on a very narrow niche industry within a broader industry. The prees of this corp sues the new company for hurting his business. I told him it wouldn't work and wouldn't find a lawyer to do it. He hand wrote his lawsuit and it was thrown out because it was frivolous. As for my case. I saved him just over a million dollars with the IRS and trust fund assessments. He is now on his third attempt to sue me for not saving him more money. The previous two attempts failed because 1. I have an arbitration clause. 2. His company is now defunct. And 3. I performed our contract to the letter. He hand wrote those lawsuits too. He is essentially harassing me with lawsuits because he has nothing better to do now. I will smash him like a bug and caught again and round and round we go. My former boss wanted to take a botched penile implant case, but we convinced him not to because of the costs of litigation. The photos. My god. The photos. Ha. Huh. I'm a 33 year old male who had never heard of a penile implant before this. Thanks. I hate it. I had a bankruptcy consult for a man in his 20s. He had racked up some 50k in credit card debt in just a few months. I asked him what he spent the money on. He said it was for several elective leg lengthening surgeries in South America to make him taller. They would break his legs and use traction to keep the bone apart so that it knitted together in the space. He thought he could just run up the cards for this and file for bankruptcy. Had to tell him that was going to flag for fraud and he was likely not going to be able to discharge that debt. People do weird things for vanity. Had to explain to someone in the military that getting caught while driving drunk five times will get your license revoked. And yes, your employer, the army, will also have a bone to pick. He was legitimately confounded, stating that he never got that drunk. God I'm glad his license was revoked. Another police officer got in trouble for yelling you little slap to a 12 year old girl who passed him on a bicycle. His defense, it was not meant to offend, it was a general statement. Currently dealing with a $500 garnishment on the wages of one of our employees. Opposing counsel keeps threatening to make you pay, meaning the company, via email. And just being downright nasty which I get. Sort of but ignorant of the law, which is unforgivable. He's acting like he's Erin Brockovich and I'm personally vomiting hexavalent chromium into a river. If only it were a river in his state, and then we might have a chance of honoring that garnishment. But alas. Had a client who wanted to set up a charity to preserve a mythical creature. Luckily I could argue failure to meet one of the three certainties is a reason why not, rather than the good old your crazy pants defense. Just had an example case in class today, which my prof's friend acted as the defense for. Some first class airplane passenger tried to sue a non first class passenger for trespass after they used the first class bathroom. Luckily the case was thrown out. I was defending a guy for DUI, he was delivering pizzas and caused an accident, he was admittedly drunk, the police officer failed to note the time of day on his notes, which meant the state couldn't prove his blood was drawn within 2 hours of the accident, so he walked free on a technicality, even though we all knew he messed up, I lectured him so hard outside the courthouse, 
you got lucky today, but next time it could cost you your life, or even kill someone else. He seemed to care, but I can never be sure. My time to shine. Warning. Messed up. Back when I was articling we had a client come in wanting to get our help with divorce proceedings. This guy was was Central Asian and spoke very little English and was functionally illiterate in both English and his native language. But the story this guy told gives me shivers to this day. We was on a work visa that was about to expire so he married a western woman in order to stay in the country. The woman he married was quite well off. In fact, her family were some of the richest people in the small town they lived in. So why marry some illiterate foreign rube? Well, the woman had been raped by her father when she was a preteen teen. From what our client told us it was consensual by both parties but she was still a preteen teen so. Yeah rape. Ick. This relationship with her father ended in her late teens when she started a similar relationship with her brother. The relationship with the brother, however, had been going on off and on for almost 15 years by the time she married my client. The problem was, the town was small and people were starting to ask questions about the siblings being so close sick. So the family's idea was to marry her off to someone really quickly to lay suspicion. They decided that my client was perfect because if he didn't do the trick in breaking up the brother-sister relationship, they could always ship the both of them off to my client's home country, which was what they ended up doing. After all this sacrifice to stay in the west, my client was shipped off home to live with his family and his new nymphomaniac wife. Now, in this time they had a child together, but almost as soon as the child was born, the wife started having an affair with my client's brother. After they were caught, the patron of the family very quickly sent them back to North America. Meanwhile, their poor child was being neglected by his mother who was too busy banging my client's brother and cared for only occasionally and badly by my client who was basically incompetent. While living with the family, the sisters, mother and aunts mostly raised the child, but when they got back to North America they had no such support system. The wife's family took them in but none of them had any interest in raising this poor child, so the two parents were reluctantly forced to care for their own child. By the time the client came to us, it was a constant fight over who was injuring the child more and whether or not the child would be raised by a parent or given to child and family services. Deeply disturbing case. After the client left, my boss told us everything that said that it was the first case in her career to really make her feel sad for humanity. I don't practice, but I vaguely remember some case from professional responsibility class about a lawyer getting in trouble for throwing a tantrum. He was suing the Barbie company or something for allegedly stealing his doll designs. And at some point he started yelling and throwing doll heads at people. I took the class many years ago, so the details are pretty fuzzy. I just recall how pathetic I would feel if my behavior was literally put in the textbook as an example of being a shit attorney. Not a case, but my friend got a bunch of people in our homeroom to write fake weird reviews on his dad's law firm page. It went on for a few weeks and after they had hit the 600 review his dad said something. Turns out that his dad wanted to sue every kid in the school for posting the reviews. Friend got suspended for almost 6 months. My mum has a client who wanted to sue Ikea because this one table she bought from them had apparently assaulted her. My mom was like WTF and the lady explained that she stubbed her thigh on one of the corners of the table and it hurt like a mother ducker so she wanted to sue Ikea for it. My mom won't stop complaining about her because she won't stop calling her for advice on the dumbest things. This has been going around for years now. My mom says she always thought the lady looked familiar and recently made the connection that she is coincidentally the same woman who once, when my brother and I were very young, called a flight attendant to our seats because my mom took one of us to the bathroom and left the other on the seat and the crazy lady claimed she was abandoning her child. Okay so, back when I was a clinic intern I had my first misdemeanor client and he had a lot of trouble showing up for court. I was an idiot and gave him my cell number so he could contact me on the way to his hearing. At 7.30am the morning of his hearing, I get texted a picture from him. This isn't going where you think. I opened it and there is a photo of an actual dead baby hooked up to medical equipment. A few beats later, I get a text telling me his baby nephew died and he won't make it to court. My fellow interns are watching this unfold in the courthouse and convince me to run a reverse google image search on the photo. Not only was his story fake, 
but I got to peruse through at least 100 photographs of dead babies instantaneously, all before 8am on a Tuesday. Never give your client your personal cell. Also, if you have to go to court for a DUI, just know that your attorney will never need a photo of a fresh corpse to get you a continuance. I'm not a lawyer but this is an actual ongoing case between members of my family. My uncle convinced my grandma who has dementia that she's signing paperwork to make sure that all her sons get her half of an apartment. She told the other two sons that she made sure they all get their shares in the apartment. Years later he sues them for the shares they received from my grandfather after he passed away and it emerged that actually grandma's half was signed over to him only. Now he's trying to get the court to force his brothers to sell him their parts without actually giving them the money up front. But by making sure he gets the property acts in his name before he pays them off in installments because he has the most shares in the apartment. Now, both his brothers couldn't care less about the apartment but they worry that if he gets it he might hurt his mother because she'll be a burden to him once he gets money from sale of the apartment. He's never worked a day in his life. Looks after my sick grandmother and relies on benefits that he gets as a carer. He's had a history of mental illness and there's a lot of suspicion that he's physically abused my grandma before she got sick whenever she wouldn't give him money. Now the paperwork that my grandma signed is being contested in court and experts are being called in to determine whether she was capable of making such a decision due to her illness. Said experts need to be independent and unbiased and this idiot tried to get a doctor who treated my grandma at the time she signed the paperwork to testify in court. This is a sad situation really because both my dad and uncle left my grandma in the care of an abusive, mentally ill man and they don't feel responsible. My grandma was a very unpleasant, cold woman and apparently ruined my uncle's marriage. My dad attempted suicide when he was young and still living with her so yeah, it's all a bit complicated. But also my uncle is a piece of shit who abuses and exploits my grandmother. Bro, you made it to the end, you're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content might. It's free and that's a great price.